Hello. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a candy box with some creasing and cutting with the Vulcan FC500 flatbed cutter. So here in the CorelDRAW software, I have opened my file with the candy box. Uh, it consists of two layers, which we can see on the right here, if we see the different layers. The one layer is the actual candy box image. So it's just the image that we want to print and uh, out of which the candy box consists. And then our second layer is the cutting lines, which are red in this case, and the creasing lines, which are blue. The colors, uh, you can choose randomly any color you like. Uh, it's just important to have two different colors for the cutting and for the creasing line, of course. Now, when we activate both layers, we can see both the cutting and the creasing lines. Um, here, you can activate which layer is visible. And uh, here on the right, you can activate which layer is supposed to be printed or to be exported. Now, for the actual printing, we don't want uh, the cutting and creasing lines to be printed. Uh, so there we just deactivated them here on the right with the print symbol. And uh, make sure we have the uh, candy box image, the print symbol is active. Now, um, in order to cut correctly, first thing we need to do is uh, create the registration marks. There we have this symbol here, which creates our sign cut registration marks. So we just click here. Here we can select the type of uh, cutter we have, which is a Vulcan in this case. The default size is five millimeters and the X and Y distance can be adjusted. We'll just leave it to 10 millimeters in this case. So when I click create, we will have those four black dots, which are our registration marks. We just close it here. And now it's important that um, the registration marks are printed, so this layer needs to be active and the candy box layer, but not the cutting and creasing layer. Now, I go to file, print. In the print preview here, I can see that the cutting and creasing lines are not to be printed, but just the image and the four registrations marks. So just click the print button in order to get my file printed. So now it's important when I want to export it to sign cut that uh, I switch it here around. So I need to activate the cutting and creasing lines to be exported and deactivate the candy box image. In case the candy box image would be a bitmap graphic like a JPEG or PNG file, it wouldn't matter. So you could import, export it to sign cut uh, together with the rest of the file. But uh, in our case, this is actually a vector graphic too, and we don't want sign cut to think uh, that it's supposed to cut around these vectors. So that's why I just switch it off. So only the registration marks layer, which has been generated here, and the cutting and creasing control layer will be exported to sign cut. This is what I do by just clicking here on the Send to Sign Cut Pro 2 button. So now it's going to open the Sign Cut Pro software which we can see here. So here we have our four registration marks and uh, we have the cutting and creasing lines in two different colors. Colors are a little bit different from CorelDRAW, um, but that doesn't really matter. In SignCut, we have our different tools and uh, options here. And uh, for each section here at the bottom, we have the different tools. Now what's important for us uh, is first of all, to select the right cutter, which we can select here. Here we select the Vulcan uh, right USB device. Then we can read the actual cutter position where we are right now. And here we could uh, move the cutting head on the cutter. Now, when we want to send the file to the cutter for the cutting, um, this is the cutout function, which we only use if we don't want to do contour cutting. If we have a printed image, like in our case, we always need to select the contour cut button. Just click that. And here we can adjust our different settings. Here we get a little preview of uh, what it's going to do. And then we can adjust the different tool settings here in the last tab. Um, here I have set two, um, I've saved two settings, one for cutting, one for creasing. My creasing setting is set uh, here for the tool two. I can set the force 
and I can set the speed, whatever I like. Um, so I'm just going to store that here again. And then for the cutting, I need to have tool one activated and set the tool and speed for tool one as well. So here I have the two different presets. I can store as many presets as I want. So if I want to use different material, I can store a preset with different four speed settings for each type of material. Um, here in the lower part, I can uh, have some more adjustments. So I want the tool one to be active. Um, I can select how many passes I want. So for example, if I want to cut a thick magnetic vinyl material, I would use two or three or four passes depending on the material. Um, I can select the blade offset, which is important to be selected correctly. So in our case, I'll set 0.25 millimeters um, for proper offset compensation of the blade. And um, I have an overcut of one millimeter, which will help to uh, better close the uh, gaps. Now, for the creasing, it's important to have set the blade offset to zero because the creasing tool actually moves exactly in the middle of the, uh, of the item. So now when I go into advanced settings, I can see my different colors here. It's important to mark that cut and color checkbox. And then for each color, I can set my different settings. So here I have the red line, which I can see is the outside cutting line. Um, what I'm going to do here is select the tool preset cutting, do my adjustments here. Um, if I want to change something, I can set the blade offset again here. So um, just click OK. And then for the, for the green line, which is in the inside, which is supposed to be creased with the creasing tool, I go to the preset creasing. And there I have my tool two left. So here, tool two force and speed are set. I click OK, click Apply. And then when I'm ready to start, I can just uh, hit the Start button. Before the machine can start working, we need to set the origin point to tell the machine where the starting point uh, for the job is. In order to do so, on the machine, we use the four arrow keys and the speed setting for one uh, or 10. So we have a speed of 10 if we want to move quickly from one point to another. And uh, we can just switch to a speed of one in order to do the fine adjustment and just position the right tool, which is usually our cutting tool, right above the first of the four registration marks. The first registration mark is also marked with a little arrow next to it, so it's clear which one is the first mark to start with. Now, in order to continue, we need to push the origin button on the control panel, which will confirm the origin, the light will switch off. This way we know that the origin has been set and then we can start working. Now, another important step before we actually send data to the machine is to uh, push the vacuum button in order to activate the vacuum pump, which will hold down the media. So we're doing that and then start our job in Sanka. Now, as we can see, the job has finished. Um, we just push the vacuum pump again in order to stop it. And uh, once it's stopped, we can very easily remove the excess material. And there we have the candy box that can now be folded to an actual box.